Hi, my name is Ken Gidge, and this is Gidge World, and welcome to it. As you know, I'm a state representative of Ward 6 right here in the city of Nashua, and I'm also known, I come from a family of inventors, but I'm also known as an artist. I do a particular type of art, a specialty sort of type of art, something that's very different and not necessarily everybody likes. In fact, the majority of people don't like it because they don't understand, I don't understand it either, but... Today we have uh, a guest, a gentleman by the name of David Tiller. Welcome. Thank you very much. And Gwendolyn Tiller. Yes. Nice Are you are related by? We're married. Ah! <laughs> yeah, it, yes, you certainly are. Let me, <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, David is a photographer, and it's, he does some really special work. Uh, and this is, David is one of the very first shows we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a lot of shows with artists. Uh, we're going to bring them together, and there will be an announcement very, very soon that we're going to have our first art show here at Access uh, Nashua, and that will be for artists to come in. Uh, we will do a live show selling art, and a percentage of the sales will go to Excess Nashua. Uh, so we're going to get everything going. But our whole goal is to try to get artists together to work together. And also, we've got plenty of artists, but we don't have enough bias. So we're going to try to get a percentage or several percent or 10 percent of the city of Nashua to buy art. And if you did that, that means artists could do more art. So what you've got to do if you don't own art is buy original piece of art and put it on your wall. And art is not that expensive. Uh, you can spend, spend a lot of money, but it's got to be original, signed by the artist. And uh, David Tiller is here. And as I said, he is a photographer and a, an extraordinary photographer. Thank you very much. Thank so uh, first of all, I want to know how you two met, because that's an interesting story in itself. I'll let Gwen tell the story. David and I were friends in high school, and... Not friend, friends, but just friends. We were friends. We just hung friends. out with the same group of friends yeah. that we still right. know today. And um, we had parted after high school. He had gone to the service. I had gone um, to California, where I did commercial artwork. And, um, and you're an art teacher? And I'm an art teacher in And you in teach what grade? I teach grades kindergarten all the way up to grade five. Where? What schools? At the Barca Elementary School in Derry. All right, great. Yeah, sure. Great. I have um, over 550 students a week. And you're an I art teach. teacher? Yep. Okay, so, so now an art to teacher, teach you took off to California, he goes in the service. How do you guys get back together? Um, 32 years later, uh, I was. A little slow, David. Yeah. I mean, no, but actually, I was prompted to go on Facebook, and, and um, I did, and there he was, and um, I clicked to say if he remembered me or to say hello, and I noticed on his Facebook he had awesome photography pieces that he had taken, and I didn't you know. You mean he's he, a good photographer, in your opinion? Unbelievable. I was so I, mean, I, I, I want to hear really, in your opinion, how good he is. I mean, I, you love the man, but how good is his work? I was taken by surprise that he did what he did, and he captures things that people wouldn't always think of capturing. Like David notices the smallest little things in life and zooms in on it, and his way of expressing what he's seeing, I think, is very profound. And now, we, we've looked at some amazing. pictures, so you and I got to talk a little, and we're going to mm -hmm. embarrass David for a little. We got rid of, we have 10 pictures that we're going to show, mm -hmm. but uh, we got rid of about 22 pictures. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, we are going to, you know, zoom in on some of David's work. Uh, and you two were, he asked you to marry him where? Um, five months after we had gotten together, he took me to France for one of my big birthday numbers on my birthday. Excuse me, birthday number, big one? You said that 5-0? Uh, All right, yeah. okay. Um, 
two and a half, oh, nearing three years ago, we went to France. And my favorite artist, it, one of my favorite artists is Claude Monet, Monet. And I had always wanted to be in Monet's garden. So he, You went to Monet's garden? Yes. And he proposed to me on the Japanese footbridge. Ah. Kind of hard for a girl to say no. And so. he has pictures of that, which which we will which yes. we will show. So you, if she if she didn't say yes, she'd still be in France. Uh, <laughs> You'd be working on me. Yeah, well. I, I go back and visit from time to time. Do you really? Yeah, You've I, been I, back. I would go back and visit her from time to oh, time. Oh, okay. Left me there. All right, all right. Uh, you just think you'd leave her. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, you wouldn't leave her. I mean, I, I have a wife who, who loves my artwork also, and they're the greatest salespeople. And not only that, is that they help us because us, you know, artists, we, though sometimes I think we're big and strong, we're not. Yeah, she we, is we my... Need, we need... Uh, she is my twin. I'm his number one fan, and we're so much alike, it's but in scary. The version. Yes, we yeah. are. <laughs> well, that, that's good. I'm very, very happy. And I met you guys. How? Well, we were on the Nashua Art Walk last year. And um, we're, we go each year now. And um, we've been going for two, three years now. And uh, we were walking through the different galleries. And we saw your artwork on the wall. And we both thought, I, I said, Gwen, come here, look at this. This is we were handed. So different and refreshing. And we were taken in by it and the depth of it. And it's the 3D so glasses. different. It's so different. And you bought a piece. And it's unique. We bought right several away. pieces, actually. And uh, I've got to tell you, I've got to tell, tell you a story about this. What happens is, is that uh, we, we're doing an art show, so I don't even, I just finished a piece of work. I mean, it, it, it still, it was still, the wet. paint still wet. I didn't take a picture of it. It happens to the best picture, obviously, you gotta go to, mm -hmm. so I had to have you guys put it online so I could, so that's how we met. So, artist relating to art. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, I wish I could do this work. So we're gonna, we're gonna start on uh, the work. And this, what do you call this one, David? Well, this is actually a photograph of, uh, dandelion seed head and I like to do a, I like to do a lot of photography of flowers and um, this one particular day um, I got down on the ground and I wanted to catch the sun behind the seed head sure and when I did the iridescence of the seed head um, it, it just came out naturally that is just so Beautiful. I think when people see this now, uh, I'm really drawn to nature a, a lot. Uh, you know, some people walk through life; they just look straight ahead. They don't look at anything. But I'm used to you know looking all around, down, up. Um, there's so much to be seen everywhere, actually. And I try to, I try to take it all in, but I can't. But I do the best I can. Well, I think when people take a take a look at this one, this one's really really kind of special. And as I said earlier, we wanted to bring it down to ten pictures, okay? Right. We, and we took twenty two out, and I felt like we were killing people and, and getting rid of nature. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is exceptional. I think when people see it, uh, it's like uh, Richard, uh, the general manager here, wasn't too sure what it was. Uh, but it's so fascinating. Most people are just used to looking at a, at a dandelion and seeing just white, you know. And they, you know, and when they were children, they'd they'd wave it in the wind, and they the seed heads would float off. But this one had the whole seed head there. So. And it it almost looks like there is a a, a web around it, almost like exactly. a spider web. Exactly. Exactly. That is really neat, and it's and though it is. Uh, it's very round, but it's not perfectly round, but it's a perfect picture. So Thank I you. think, congratulations. This Thank should be one that uh, uh, when people see, this is going to be something that one's going to definitely want on the wall. Okay, we're going to move was, on. I was uh, drawn to photography. Uh, as a child, I used to read uh, my parents and my grandmother's National Geographics and look at the photo photographs the in there. The that's what... And when I was uh, yeah, see, 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 she's laughing. when I was little, I always wanted to. When I grew up, <laughs> I wanted to be a photographer for uh, Life Net 
Geo or um, Look Magazine. And I used to look at the pictures in the magazines all the time. And my father was a, a, an avid photographer. Oh, really? So and uh, I traveled a lot with my parents when I was younger. I left the United States when I was six and I moved to Germany for two years. And then uh, after that, I, uh, we moved from Germany to Israel. We lived in Israel for three years. We were there during the Six-Day War in the 60s. And, um, and when I was seven, my parents wanted to go to Africa on a sightseeing safari. To me, this was, you know, th this just blew me away because I was used to seeing animals in zoos and museums. Yes. And so to take me to Africa and put me out there in the wild, you know, with the animals with no cages, uh, it was just mind blowing. But uh, I do remember that as a child going to Africa. And, uh, and you were taking pictures then, or starting to take pictures? Uh, yeah, I had a, I had a, uh, I had a my dad, my dad's Agfa camera. Oh yeah. Okay. And uh, you know he would take pictures, and I'd say, let me take a picture, and um, I still cherish all those pictures that my folks have. And uh, the thing about photographs is that if a house is burning down, you save everybody in the house, all your family and all the pets. The next thing somebody would go back for is their photographs or their artwork. Isn't that the truth? They would go back in that house for that, and they would give their life for it. I wouldn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I've read stories. I get, the, I get my wife, the cat, the dog out. I've read stories it's true. You know, about the tsunami mm -hmm. uh, in Japan. Yes. About a grandfather that went back in the house. Everybody was safe, but he went back to the house for the photographs. It's and, pretty powerful. And, isn't and, it? and he died. But um, so as a child, I was used to, you know, living and growing up in foreign countries and seeing a lot of different things. Um, my folks brought me back to this country, um, and I graduated from Salem High School in Salem, New Hampshire. But prior to graduating from Salem High, uh, we went to Iran for two years. And uh, Was your father a spy, or? My father worked for Raytheon Company. So he was a spy? Yeah, they right, basically okay. he was a spy. Wow, what a, what a. So I've thing. had quite a broad, you know, <laughs> the world, was right out there. I've been very fortunate, very fortunate. And I like, it's only times like these that I get to talk about it that I know how fortunate I am. And to see the world differently as an American growing up in foreign countries. Wow. That's, that's pretty powerful. And, and when you say that, and I looked, we just looked at your first picture, I can see, you can see there's a whole world right there. All right, we're going to move on to the next picture. And what do you call this one? I call this dream. Dream? And the reason why I call it dream is because it looks like a dream to me. Uh, I, I like to get up early in the morning before the sun comes up and, and, and go shooting in various places in New Hampshire. And this was uh, in the fall time when things start to cool down here in New England and the water starts to cool off. You can see the fog rising off the water in the morning, and uh, this is the Contoocook River. This is pretty powerful because over to the right of this picture, the sun is definitely coming up, but to the left of it, it's dark. This almost looks like it's an ET spaceship taking off <laughs> to a degree. I, I don't mean it that way, but it's so right. beautiful. Uh, the, the fog and the light, and that's just so... Uh, it, is the pictures, do you look for stuff like this? Do you just run into it? Are you out there early in the morning? I, I do look for it. Um, I was actually uh, up here to photograph uh, covered bridges. And I hiked down through the woods a little bit to shoot behind me, behind this picture, the covered bridge. But as I was walking back, the sun was rising, and I wanted to capture the, the ambiance of this right here. Um, I didn't go looking for this. It appeared in front of me. It's a, it's a absolutely beautiful picture. All right, we're going to move on to number three. Ah, I think everybody's going to find this one exciting. This is a glass butterfly? Glass wing. Okay. It's called, uh, the scientific name is Greta Otto, but it's called a glass wing. And um, I actually photographed this uh, 
down at the butterfly place. That's not a real butterfly. It is a real butterfly. Mm -hmm. No. Yes, it is. No, that's not a real butterfly. Yes, it's a real butterfly. That's butterf impossible. It's a real butterfly about that big. Wow. I thought when you said the glass butterfly, I thought it was a real glass of butterfly that you put down there. That's a real butterfly. Because it's transparent. You can see right through the wings. I know. Wow. It's impressive, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. And, I, and it's very small. Yeah, it's only about five centimeters, an inch, an inch and a half. Wow. That's, that's very, very exciting. Um, did you try to do this? Did it yes, just I did. pop up or this was what you were trying I to do? I chased this butterfly around the whole, the whole butterfly place until he finally uh, landed. And I, um, this is a result of probably... And you took it home and... 30, 30, or 40, 30 or 40 photographs I tried to get. The one you wanted? Yes. I cannot believe that. I really cannot. That is so good. Thank you very much. Wow, what do you think, Gwen? Do you like this one? I love it. And you can't remove them for the butterfly place. So <laughs> he didn't remove it from no, the building. No, if you try to walk out with and, a butterfly, they'll shoot you. Yeah. So he'd rather just take picture shots of the butterflies oh, no, inside. He, no, he's but out of the country. He's still I know. It was, he's butterfly still. It was amazing that you have to be patient enough and get the opportunity for something that flutters around so... Yeah, you're an art um, teacher. You're right. You teach art. Mm -hmm. Now, so you sort of got to get the kids to calm down a little. <laughs> yeah. When you see your husband running around trying to... Do you want to just... Are you mad at him? No, you, no I know. I, I wanted to go for it because I know what he's aiming towards capturing. He's on a mission. Yeah, well... So I want him to complete his mission and feel good about what he's doing. He's driven to do what he does, and it ends up coming out very well. This is absolutely this is beautiful. I really thought, I honestly thought, it was a glass butterfly because the wings are transparent. You can see right through them. What a beautiful little creature that is. It is. It's beautiful. It's uh, God, God's creation. I, yeah, I guess so. God, right. It's God's art. Yes, yes, if we just around here just take pictures of it. But that's a picture of it. We're going to go on to number four. Ah, this is the angel, and it's the angel. Uh, explain it. Well, this angel is, uh, there's a pair of these angels, actually, um, to the entrance of a cemetery here in, Na in Nashua. And what cemetery? Uh, St. Xavier. Okay. Down oh, the, yes. Down the street from Dairy Queen. Yes. Up at exit six. Okay. And um, I actually, uh, what this is, is there's a halo. And a lot of people naturally won't look at the sun because, you know, you're not Correct. supposed to look at the sun. Right. But what happens in the sky is that there's high altitude clouds called cirrus clouds. Right. And in these cirrus clouds, there's little ice crystals. And what happens is a halo will form and this is a 22 degree halo because it's 22 degrees wide. So what I did was I placed the sun behind the angel and the halo that I saw appearing that day, I knew that the halo would be appearing. I could see it from driving around. Okay. So I said, oh, I'll go over to the cemetery and I'll place the sun behind the angel and I'll shoot the shot so it looks like a halo around the angel. It looks like actually it, you do have a, a large halo, but right behind it there is, it looks like God's finger touched it. I mean, it is, it's, how can I say this? I'm not a, I'm not a religious person, all right? I think I'm a spiritual person. I am as well, and so is Gwen. Uh, Gwen but is religious. Anybody who so takes a look at this, this is something I would definitely not feel at all uh, uh, self-conscious because I'm not a religious person I don't like religious but this is just exquisite and the thing is that uh, it is a uh, it, it is a uh, a statue but you bring it to life mm -hmm. and that is that's hard that's not easy I what I do is easy this is hard well uh, there's some things to me that are just what can I, obvious some things I see that are obvious. Um, 
photographs that I see that are obvious. Other things I think of, I'll be driving around and I'll say, oh, I'll have to come back and take a picture of that. But then I think to myself, like this day, I said, oh, well, there's a halo. Let's put a halo around an angel. That's obvious. To well, him. That's to to him. Were you there? You... Um, I had in the past when we took pictures, and this particular one, I don't think I was with no, David. I don't think so. But when I saw it, it, to have something like this enlarged on a wall, it would give me a great peaceful feeling, yes. a peace of mind. And it looks, how the angel's looking up, it's like she's giving hope. It just looks hopeful, it, and it has its own, it has its own um, comfort level. I mean, just looking at this, it just makes me feel comforted. It's peaceful, the blue is serene and peaceful, and she's majestic in the way she's looking up in the halo around her, it just, it's like a and spiritual wings, comfort. It's, yeah. it's a comfort. And the balance in the picture is beautiful. It is. It it's is. just uh, totally beautiful. Also, as, as I mentioned earlier, we did get rid of about 12 other pictures. And there was uh, another one. It was a different day. It was a, well. From a different angle. And I really wanted to run both of them, but it was just, we had to, we had to kill an angel. We have our one angel. This is not a bad angel. Okay, we're going to move over to number five. Ah, now explain this one, because this is a very special picture. This is, where is this picture? This is actually photographed here in New Hampshire. Um, these clouds um, are known as iridescent clouds, and this is the natural color of the clouds. Um, you didn't know Photoshop, nothing? This it's is natural? not Photoshop, this is natural color. It looks almost like the, if somebody was looking at it uh, from a degree and not knowing it's clouds, it could almost look like it's waves going out or coming in. Exactly. Looks like waves on the beach. Right, right. But uh, this particular day, um, the clouds, once again, you know, they started changing colors. And what happens in the high at atmosphere is that um, different shaped ice crystals do different things to clouds. And if you can block the sun out, which the sun is actually up on the upper left and it's behind a pine tree. Okay. And so what I'm photographing here is just a small portion of the sky. And there was literally probably 100 miles of sky that you could see. And this is just a small portion of it. And they started slowly changing colors. And so I was there photographing it for probably uh, 15 minutes as they were changing coming across the sky. The right 15 minutes. Now this picture uh, is really an award-winning picture. It was, um, it was actually selected uh, to be part of an art exhibit uh, at the Boyden Gallery at St. Mary's College in Maryland. And uh, after the gallery, the National Science Foundation wanted to take some select pictures from there and do an exhibit in Washington, D.C at the National Science Foundation. And so now it's hanging at, presently it's hanging at the National Science Foundation until uh, June or July, I believe. I'm jealous. He's, a, he's an artist, I just throw paint around. This is, this is very, very special. Uh, and again, this has a, a, a to, very calming effect. I have to tell you this. I really appreciate your art a lot. So does Gwendolyn. It was so refreshing and new, and I've met several artists uh, in my life, and to me, your art is, I, I, don't, I don't say, well, this one's better than that one. It's art, and it's different, okay? Each artist has their own thing. Gwen and I were lucky enough to meet Alan Bean, who was the fourth man to walk on the moon, about two years ago. Wow. And Alan Bean is the only artist from this world to ever visit another world. And everybody thinks of, you know, the moon is void, it's gray right. and white. Right. Not his artwork. And we have several of his books uh, that we bought, but I'm, you are right there, right beside Alan Bean, because your art is so refreshing and new. And it's, you didn't have to go to the moon to think of something okay, different. Okay, that, that, that's it. I, you're, I, you're up, I paid you only $50 for this one. <laughs> and, uh, that, that's, well, thank, I am thank you. I am serious. But you see, I uh, thank you, and I appreciate it. And it is different. But 
I can't do this. I can't do this. This is this picture. And I can't paint. I can't dance. Can you dance? <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, it's awful. So since I can't paint, you can paint, and I, I, I photograph. This looks like, to me, Stairway to Heaven. When I first saw stairway this. Stairway to Heaven. It looks like the stairways that would go to heaven. So we killed off one angel, OK? Mm -hmm. So. You are definitely invited. Uh, uh, David Tilla mm -hmm. is definitely going to be one of the artists coming in here. We're going to have live uh, shows, art shows uh, here at Access Nashua. David will be uh, one of the artists coming in. And so you're going to be able to see his work. And we, he will bring both angels. We're going to revive one of those mm -hmm. angels. But if you run those two angels with this picture, it is very spiritual. Mm -hmm. It's very spiritual. Now, did you head off to do that? What, what made you wait for the colors? Was there, did you see the waves? What? I saw them changing. I, 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 over the years, I've learned about atmospheric. It's called atmospheric optics. And I've, I've read up on atmospheric optics. And, and I observe. I watch the sky. I look at the sky and say, oh, look at that. That looks different. And then um, this one particular day, it just started happening. And I said to myself, I'm going to stand here until it's not happening anymore and just shoot photographs. Very, uh, there is a, a spiritual run through this. Mm -hmm. as, as I was the one who killed things off to get 10 down. And uh, I don't think you knew exactly what I was doing when I saw stuff like this, mm -hmm. so we got rid of a lot of great pictures. Mm -hmm. But between the, I'm sorry we killed off one angel because that would have been perfect, but uh, <laughs> with, those, with those two angels and this, it's very spiritual. It is. Do you think that you're, you're traveling around the world is, uh, you say you're not a religious person, but you're spiritual. How you were, had no formal, let's say, religion? Well, I was actually, as I was, a young child, I do recall, my parents said I was, you know, I, I was baptized Catholic. Um, I was also baptized uh, Baptist, and I was also baptized Methodist. I'm still waiting for it all to take, you know, but uh, well, yeah, I, I just... You sound uh, like I, a politician. I, Ladies I, and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to the new politician. This guy is, you know... I just I mean, feel... You can, I can't do any of this. I just feel it's... I feel a sense of spirituality. I do believe in a higher power. I do believe that there's something much greater than human beings because we're not it. You know, we are not the answer. And, um, and there's certain signs that I've received in my life that tells me oh, that there's minute, so much gentlemen. more. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You said certain signs. Now this is going to be... There's so much Give me more. a sign. Uh, spirituality? Yeah. Two years ago, uh, my wife and I were in a car accident, a horrible car accident, and uh, technically, medically, we shouldn't be here right now. It was a head-on collision, and we should have both died in the accident, and we did not. And, and that was definitely a sign. Um, it was a horrible accident. But we're walking and talking, and we're alive, and there is something much greater do you think getting us. that close to what we'd call it the end, death, does something, triggered something inside of you? I know it triggered something inside of me. And Gwen, as far as I know, has always been spiritual. And, and, and that, that sounds there's no, really... There's no just, explanation for me. There's no explanation other than... We have a purpose and our job's not done here. Right. And what... For my take, when I'm personally observing, David did, like he said, always have the spirituality. Maybe that's what I was drawn to. It was a comfort. And what I saw a lot of his photographs, it was a comfort for me to see. And I just really fell in love with the work pieces that he had and what he shared with me. And he, since the accident, too, there has to be a reason why we are here. And I'm hoping or my calling, what I would like to achieve is just to, to touch someone's life or make someone smile for one day 
or just bring out, out a smile in one person, I feel that I'm doing my job being Christian. And I would like to feel that if I was spared or to go on living, that I could do something great and bring beauty to others, whether it be through art you know, I think you too, or esteem I think you, or anything. I think one of the, the great things of both of your lives is getting together. This is just, because I've watched you two, I've observed you two, and uh, I'm looking at this work, and you're so in tune with his work, when I mean, in some cases, your, your explanations are better than his, to a degree. Well, it, it touches me. To, to a greater degree. It, it, just, <laughs> it has really touched me. And when David and I first got together, we were just going to hang out as friends. And when we first looked at each other, we are like, oh... So it's more yeah. than that. Right, and we gonna, both were saying, we don't want more than that. We, we just want to be friends. But We're going to move on to the next picture. It's, it's a calling. It's a calling. Ah, here we go. Now, you're a rock and roller, I take it. And this is Lenny Kravitz. Yes, this is Lenny Kravitz. And uh, Gwen and I go to quite a few rock and roll concerts together. When we were younger, we also went to concerts, not together, but with friends. With groups. But right. uh, lately, as uh, you know, we've... Uh, come to appreciate the other different art. art. I mean, yes, this is art. This is, this is, he's an artist, but the, the picture itself. He is an artist. The guitar is a, is a work of an art. Absolutely. Um, art is all around us. Art is, and I know this sounds cliche, but I truly believe it, art is a universal language. Ah, it is. It, that's true. And it's it everything. Is it is, well... Uh, people talk all over the world about American films. Right. Uh, people know America, but I have a son who's in China teaching English, and he tells me how the Chinese feel about Americans. If it's made in America, they want to buy it. I swear it's the truth. I, I mean it. And they will come to America and buy literally things that are made in their country, but they bought it in America. So I think if we get back to that, mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're getting the art out and the, you know, the way people feel, but this is a, a, a very striking picture. Now, uh, he lets you take this picture? It's uh, we, were actually, uh, we were actually, I bought concert tickets to the concert, and uh, we were in the second row. So we were like six feet away from him. And, and, and we he were just, did not mind. No, he didn't mind at all. And Lenny is actually, uh, we were talking about spirituality. He's a very spiritual uh, person himself. Um, he wears both a star of David and a cross because his mother was Christian and his father was Jewish. And so he has the best of both worlds. Yeah, he has. And uh, quite, a, quite a musician, quite an artist. And uh, he's one of those unique people. He is. And also right. very spiritual. He yeah. was ve in his concert tour. He was all about spirituality and bringing people together. Really? Yeah. It was all positive. His, his tour was actually called the Black and White Tour, Black and White America. And bring, ah. And bringing all the differences together as one, because we are all one. All right. It was very powerful. We're gonna move on to the next picture. I've been waiting for this one. So you didn't think I knew what I was doing. I'll let Gwen talk to this one because she knows exactly what it is. Okay, this is Monet's. Um, Claude Monet's garden in Gervonet, France. And this is where he painted a lot? Oh, absolutely. He, his impressionist artwork of the water lilies, he painted. Now, um, what is so good about this? It reflects the sky. Uh, no, I mean, and it's water. you two. Oh, more so than just the artist in the artwork himself. <laughs> this is where we were talking about This is when my, my artist really showed his um, romantic side and knowing that I love um, Impressionist artwork, I love Claude Monet, decided to take me there for my 50th birthday. And he proposed to me on the Japanese footbridge that is right off to the left-hand side of this particular picture. I w was looking at the water with David, and we he said, oh, we'll have someone take our picture. And he had a woman take our picture, and while she was taking the picture, he proposed to me. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he, yeah. 
So yeah. did he take you by surprise? Yes. Um, I knew we were going to, at some point in time, get Go engaged. Further. Right. And like we looked at rings and everything else, and he sprung it on me on the bridge right there. Well, you can't do much better Hard to than say. this. Hard right. Very... Monet, where he painted the water lilies, et cetera. Uh, I would say a romantic. Yes. Yes, and I would say it's quite interesting how the his art, everything is coming together. See, I, Absolutely. like I said before, I can't paint like Monet. I can't paint like you or Gwen or anybody else. Yeah. But I can photograph it, and I can make the photograph other people see in the photograph that it looks like an impressionist painting. Yes. That's, it's, I, it's beautiful. We, we, we put this, again, I killed off a lot of things, mm -hmm. but I wanted to make sure we got this in. We, you didn't leave her, obviously. She said yes, and you brought her home. I think we went through that, but what a place. Wow. It was we rode bikes. We, we took a train from Paris. Giverny is about a half hour away from Paris. And we went to this small town. And when we got off the train in this small town, we rented bicycles. And we rode bicycles through the French countryside, two or three miles to Claude Monet's house. And it was, <laughs> uh, it was in April. And April it was in just, Paris, I mean, right? It was just so like perfect. a movie to me. It was all so surreal. We it were really even holding hands while riding the bikes going, we're on a country road. We're riding bikes. We're we're in Paris. We're going to Claude Monet's garden. Where you headed? And and it was like we were so giggly through the whole it thing. It was 60, 65 degrees. Beautiful, Perfect beautiful day. day. Beautiful spring day. And mm. the clouds. I'm so happy we had those clouds reflecting in the water because that's how Monet would have painted that. Uh, that's right. And and clouds. Uh, David seems to be doing very well with clouds. Yes. By the way, we we realize that <laughs> by now. Uh, Thank you. Uh, in fact, if you want to know the truth, if we turn this upside down, you would. <laughs> it, it it's is, amazing yes. how how the clarity you know, I'll, came I'll out. I'll bet you if you did, we can't do it because this is a computer. But I it would be interesting because it it's so clear. The, the, the water. Uh, yeah, People may think breeze. it's an upside down picture if they first look at it. Really, yeah. But, uh, well, that's, that's, you can't do much better than that mm -mm. to, to uh, propose. Uh, did my best. Well, uh, that's in, the, this work is something. I and truly this did. Is, this is part of the work that you will be bringing in yes. when you do your art show here. Yes. Okay, we're going to move on to the next. Ah, Sting. So, uh, this is, I take it, you guys go to, Concerts, this is a Sting concert. Where was this, and how close were you? Four rows. Or we six? were at the wing. Yeah, we were at the wing. We were in the fourth row. So, how did you get these tickets? I made sure I got the tickets. <laughs> a little, pay a little extra. <laughs> I did pay a little extra, but it was well worth it. And as far as um, uh, you know, paying a little extra, like I said, you know, this is we only have one dance in this life. And that, that whole accident thing that I explained, you can't take it with you when you go, so you might as well enjoy it while you're here. We very much enjoyed seeing Sting. Enjoy, appreciate too, the music. And he loves the life arts. and his shows. And he's, he's a true a musician. He is, and, and, he, and he too is spiritual. So we, we've come to find out that we appreciate artists that really appreciate life, that appreciate living, that are soulful, that um, vocalize and so it comes from within, that we get the pleasure of being so close to these artists and they don't mind the photography that we've done. You know, done. It, it always seems like it's the, the great artist who it's uh, the amateurs who give you a hard time. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, it's factual. It yeah. is, because we were, yes, we've gone to smaller venues, and we said, oh, no photographs, which is a kick, because these artists, like, they'll smile right for us, at, at us, and That's... no problems. And we were it's so beautiful to see Sting, um, the way that this came out. David captured some great lighting with this one. And Sting, sure. Look how happy he, Sting yeah, he, himself he looks. looks. Uh, he's excellent. in the right place. Yep, and absolutely. And you guys are in the right place. Absolutely. And that's the right picture. Yep. I mean, that's not 
when you take a look at something like it, you can see the veins in his neck, and I mean, this is, he's really... He's really happy. Fun. Yeah, he's happy. He's very happy. All right, we're going to move on to the next one. Ah, now this one is, what do you call it? It's a teddy bear. And well, it actually it's is. It's not a teddy bear. It's, a, it's actually called the teddy bear sunflower. Okay. And so this sunflower is actually about this big. Which is about a foot across? Yeah, probably around. Right, okay. Right. This is a different kind of sunflower. And I didn't want to get the roundness. I wanted to capture the heart and the soul of the flower. Of the sun. Oh, it's, it, it looks like the sun. Yeah. I was actually, I was actually about a foot away. I was about a foot away from it. So what I did was I took the whole picture and then I just cropped a square ah. part of it. Ah. And I like um, I just like how it just radiates that's out not, in, that's not a in trick. every direction. That's not a trick what you did. No, it's not. But what you did uh, is... Uh, it's not a trick at all. I don't know what to t say. I just I wish I could do stuff like this. I can't. Look at the light... Uh, going around it, and the middle is a little, I mean, we won't say dim, we'll just say not as light. Uh, it almost looks like a paintbrush. Almost like somebody, it's really a, a nice piece of work. This is also something that you will be showing, I take yes. it? Yes, yes. Right, he, gonna... he really captured the um, depth perception in that, where it's just, you can see it's just you see anything flower. spiritual in this? Well, it, it, there's the heart of it in the center, and you have the darkness, and it spreads outward and gets lighter. And to me, it's just, it draws you in, but brings you back out, like an element of surprise might pull you out, or fireworks, or there's some, like a spark. And um, it's the simplest picture of the simple heart of a flower. But look how it branches out. It extends itself. It's very well. It's very welcoming to look at. As simple as it is, it's it's a welcomed picture. To me, it, to me, it's almost hypnotizing. It just keeps you looking. Yeah, it's at it interesting and, you would say that because I'm looking at the flower and I'm saying, you know, I'm doing a, a show. I ought to say something. I ought to start talking or something. And I'm just just taking a look at it. It draws, I think, it draws you into. Yeah, it. I think mm -hmm. that will be some that people will stand for a while and look at. That's. Uh, that's a, that's a nice piece of work. Now let's see what we have here, which would be the last one, and we're back with rock and roll. And this is this is a photograph of Nine Inch Nails. That is Trent Reznor, and um, this is actually uh, this was shot at the Verizon in Manchester. Wow, where okay. were you? Again, you paid the money and got the. Actually, the tickets were very fair, uh, and. Um, I didn't have front row seats or second row or anything like that. I actually took both of my sons. This was their first concert. Oh, really? And I, I took this. How long ago was this? Um, son's first this concert. was three years ago, four years ago. And uh, we were actually off to the side of the stage, but they were still in very good seats. We weren't down in the crowd. And um, Trent also is a very spiritual person. I think when, and the way the lighting is, it almost looks like it's smoke. And, and in fact, some of the great photographers and pictures are just exactly what this is. Exactly. It's you, it's, you've got the individual, the light is there, uh, he's sort of kind of hid, uh, the light's hitting him frontly, so you're in the side of him. Uh, it's just... I like the shadow streaks. Yes. 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 The shadow streaks from, you know, the microphone, the guitar, his head. No, the, the shadow, oh, all right, okay. Oh. See what I mean? I didn't, yes, yes, you said shadow. I was working on the light. You can even see this shadow streaks. Yes, there. from the from the other gentleman's head, which was, yes. wow. And this over to the, the singer behind him, there is, how did you do this? Was this by accident? Was this by luck, or? It was because of the lighting. Well, I don't mean that. I know it's because of the lighting. No, I, but I mean, had, you know the, had, the, had the what you were doing? Had the, yeah, I, I knew what I was doing, and I, I wanted to, you know. <laughs> I, I take a lot of pictures. I just don't take, you know. A lot of people, when they're doing photography, 
they'll take one picture and then they get home and they look at their camera and they say, oh, I didn't get it. Well, if you want to get it, you have to take a lot of pictures. What do you use for a camera? Um, actually, uh, right now I'm using a Canon uh, G12. But I just recently purchased my first digital SLR, so I can't wait to... Uh, you haven't start... used a digital? No, I have not. You haven't? These, this is all film? No, it's not film. It's a, it's a Canon point-and-shoot, actually. Oh, oh, okay, okay. It's a Canon point-and-shoot. Um, but you have to... Uh, there's several things you have to think of, you know, lighting, uh, should I use a flash, don't use a flash. Are you in trying, something wait, like, wait, wait a minute, are you trying like, to tell me, I, I won't say a cheap camera, but compared to probably what you got now, you got these pictures with it? Everything I, I've shown you was done with a point and shoot camera. Um, wow. Just, you know. That's, that's, a, that's a very, very some, impressive. You, you need to know, you need to know. Even a simple point and shoot camera, you need to know. Uh, point and shoot. Yeah. I want to shoot you. <laughs> so, I mean, so, now I'm so I'm now I'm ready to dive into using a uh, SLR camera. Now he's ready to. to did you hear that, Gwen? Now yes. he's ready to use a real camera. Uh, well. He has the possibility of tweaking um, on the camera itself. Yes. He has a point and shoot. Yes. So, if you want to do a sepia. He could do yeah, sepia yeah, right away. If yeah. he wanted to do black and white, he could do that right away. With um, David could do it also in Photoshop, but he has the accessibilities on his camera to tweak what he needs to, but it's not as programmable as a 35 millimeter. So he, but he does have the knowledge in the eye yes. to play. It is the eye. And his layout and his compositions and everything that he knows what to look for, whether he knows whether he knows it or not, he's he has a gift where he sees something further than someone else might see it. I do know it. When I see it, that's one thing I always say. I'll know it when I see it. When I see it, I shoot it. Well, uh, but I shoot it. That, and it is a gift. There's, yes. no, there's no question about that. And uh, we have other photographers coming in, uh, several of you know, and uh, uh, it's going to be very fascinating to see, see what they're coming up with. We're also going to have a, a yes. lot of other artists. Well, Absolutely. We've gone about 45 minutes, close to an hour. You didn't think it was, uh, and it's gone pretty nice. We haven't yes. beaten mm -hmm. each other up. Not yet. And there's what? Not yet. We're not, we're not yet done yet. But there's one thing I do want to bring up with you people about all the pictures. There's nothing harsh. There's no edges. It's around soft. to everything. There's nothing mean in any of these, even for the, for the sake of getting the pictures. And very spiritual. This is a very mm -hmm. spiritual picture. Mm -hmm. This may be the nine inch nails, but stop, picture, uh, light. Shadows. Mm -hmm. So easy on the eyes and comforting to look at. Ah, that's a very good point. Well, David, I want to thank you. Very, I want to thank, thank, thank you. you very much. Oh thank no, you. and thank and you Gwen, again very much for your and time. And your 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 kids, they must be happy with you. Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> now, do you have a know. website, or my own, how can but... people get in touch with you? Well, they can get in touch with me. Uh, they can email me at my. Um, and my email address, it's uh, D-L-T, Blue Frog, Blue, B-L-U-E-F-R-O-G. Blue Frog. At AOL.com. And the reason why it's Blue Frog is because I have a tattoo of a South American um, dart frog. Um, yeah. And it's a blue frog. The ones that bite you and kill you. No, no, these don't. Those they nice. just tell other creatures, stay away from me. That's what... That it so color, you want you put that's something what, when you stay away. That's from what it? color in nature means. When somebody, when another animal sees something that's really colorful, it tells them. I remember last time Joey ate one of those, and he's not around anymore. So don't eat the bright colored frogs. Uh, okay. <laughs> color in nature. I'm pushing him around, and he's, he's handling himself very well. Okay, so you you are also Facebook. Yes, I'm on Facebook, and David. My name is David Lee Tiller. Uh, telephone number, or would you like to give a telephone number out? Sure. Flicker. Do you have your Flickr account for people to see? Oh, yes, and, and I have my, uh, all my photographs, most of my photographs are on Flickr, uh, F-L-I-C-K-R, 
It's a popular uh, photography website. And once again, it's DLT Blue Frog. Or you can just look up my name, David Lee Tiller. Okay, well, thank you. And I've got to give out all my information. My name is Ken Gidge, obviously. I'm on Facebook, so befriend me and also uh, David. Please. Pardon me? Please. Please, yes. The word please works sometimes. Not with me, necessarily. but So I'm on Facebook. David's on Facebook. Please uh, befriend us. My telephone number is 864-9332. I have a website, gidgeworld.com, or if you go to Gidge World uh, YouTube, we have a whole 48 minutes on YouTube, which we're very happy that Richard uh, got us on. And uh, I guess that's about it. Oh, my, uh, I have a, uh, let's see, what do I have? Uh, email account, which would be K. Gidge, that's K-G-I-D-G-E at AOL dot com. Uh, so you will see David again uh, in the months to come. We will be starting art shows here, live art shows. Uh, so I want to thank these two people. Awesome. And also I want to thank Richard, uh, who's doing all the engineering and has to plug all this stuff in. And thank you. So my name is Ken Gidge. This has been thank Gidge you. World. And thank you for tuning in. And see you next time.